Hey, Ben and Sitches and YouTube family. Hope you guys are being blessed. And hope you guys are having a wonderful Christmas with your families. And also, once again, really um, take some time to spend with the Lord. Um, I know, I feel like it, even myself, He's really calling me to seek me, seek me more, to seek Him more. Um, so this uh, particular message, I feel the Lord put on my heart. Almost some of like a sermon, uh, yeah, it definitely, He just put on my heart just like um, two days ago. And all these ideas and the thoughts and the message and uh, came flooding to my mind. Um, and so initially I was like, Lord, should I write about it? Or I think I, to do a video is even uh, really more powerful. Uh, but the message you put on my heart, on my heart is, will you let this cut pass? Will you let this cut pass? And lately the Lord has really been, I've really coming to understanding now more and more of suffering and the cross and you know I've really come to realize for me the Lord uh, speaks to me when it comes to suffering in numbers and um when you see 555 or I'll say anyone sees 555 that Lord's letting you know that's grace five is the number of grace so when you see 555 the Lord's letting you know hey a trial test or some type of oppression is coming but my my grace is sufficient for you I give an abundant grace for you to endure it and I didn't get these kind of in increments in the beginning and initially I used to be so fearful I'm like because they'd just be like car breaking down. They'd just be like, damn, I'm like, Lord, you know. And now it's, honestly, I get like every day, couple, probably a couple of times. I'm just like, okay, Lord. So at this point, I just, rather me count, I'm just not to that place of counting a jewel just yet. But I'm praying to get there. And when I see these things, I'm just kind of like, okay, Lord, you will be done. Okay, Lord, give me the grace, you know. And so um, we have to first, I've done a video already about suffering, but we have to recognize that as a believer, when, when you said yes to Jesus, guys, you're called to a, a life of suffering. You're called to a life of um, affliction, of trials and tribulation, just as this word says. So the abundant life is not about having abundance of things or living comfortably. The abundant life is fruits of spirit. The abundant life is it's, it's, it's righteousness and joy and peace in the Holy Spirit. That's what the abundant life is, is to really have an inward peace and an inward joy that no one can take with no circumstance. And I'm not even there, but that's my desire. But that's really what it is. And I know it sounds so draggy to say that, because we honestly won't teach them in the church about yielding ourselves to suffering. You know, Paul talks about that he shares an affliction, uh, the, the affliction of suffering with Christ. And we're called to share in Christ's suffering so they can share his glory. Once again, these are things that we don't talk about in the church. And a lot of times people see suffering differently. And so one thing Rex to the Lord has mentioned is that suffering is any inconvenience, any inconvenience, guys, that we have in our lives, which is so many, we can offer to him as a sacrifice, as a fast offering with suffering. And these are suffering. Some of us have a lot heavier crosses, as I mentioned before. Each and every single one of us have different measures of grace, different different measures of, of, of faith, and also to design our crosses. The Lord knows the end. He, his desire is holiness. His desire truly is holiness. So he knows how to get each and every single one of us there in our own designer crosses, our own designer trials and tests and tribulations. And so that's why it's so important that we don't compare ourselves to others um, at the same time in that too as well. And um, if we're not if we're not understanding these things, you have to also recognize that the, the greater your cross, the greater your, the heavier your cross that you're carrying is the higher the calling that you have. The God's really calling to a greater level of sanctification. And in the eyes of the world, that's going to go lower and lower and lower in loneliness and hum in humility and in weakness. So you will crush, strip, continue to press you down. And that's what's been happening to me this season um, more than ever. This is definitely a season of tears upon tears upon tears. And I got to have and having to get to a place like, okay, things are not going to change, Nana. The Lord, his desire for you is holiness. So either I can continue walking in self-pity, being downcast, discouraged, woe is me. Or either I can really take this cross and love it just as Christ did. And so the Rosie has really been helping me with that to really reflect, especially when I do the self will mystery, uh, to really reflect about Christ's sufferings and you know, when he suffered. And when I, I see that and when I'm able to go through these mysteries and meditate on his word, I'm like, how dare I walk in self-pity and be discouraged or just give him such an understanding that Christ endured it, but I can too as well. Or if nothing else, I've learned that the deeper the suffering lies, the deeper the trials and tribulations God, God allows in your life, it really allows you to have a deeper and greater level of um, understanding, a level of, of gratification for the passion of the cross. And so now when I watch the Passion of Christ, 
there's nowhere in it all that I can't stop from crying and crying and crying because I see what the Lord did for me. And I'm really allowing to have such a greater love. I get it now when he said, the greater you suffer, the greater the intimacy. And it may not be sincere consolation. The consolation may, may not be the seeing him, hearing his voice, experiencing the most amazing ways. But it's almost like my heart draws near to him. Because, like, God, I understand you now. I understand. I understand you now because I have suffered through certain things. When I found myself suffering through certain things, I'm like, I picture myself there with Christ in the different times of his passions. When I found myself back up against the wall, like that, that challenge that I just faced recently, of just being utterly betrayed, I found myself, I felt I felt like I was in Gethsemane in the garden with Jesus at that time and standing before Pontius Pilate and all of these false accusations being thrown at him before audience. And I just stood there in silence, just as he did. And it just makes me just have such a great appreciation. And I feel like our hearts just connect in that way. And God's desiring, he's looking. He's looking for brides who want to share in his sufferings. Because many are willing to share in the blessings of God. And yes, God has, these blessings are good. God has granted his blessings. And those who need suffer, you get blessings, we get blessings too as well. But God's desire is that who will? Who will who will share in these sufferings with me? Who, right now, Jesus still suffers. And he's looking for brides who will share in the affliction of his suffering so they may share in his glory. He's looking for those who will say, no, Lord, I won't allow this cup to pass. Not my will, but your will be done. And so that's what the message is about, is that will you let this cup pass? Will you let this cup pass? And I found myself, guys, in this season facing things I never thought I would face. Facing mountains that I, I realized I had made inner vows before God in my heart saying, God, I don't ever, that's my greatest fear. Don't, don't, Lord, don't let it happen. Please don't allow this to happen. Lord, I don't think I could be able to take it. I don't think I'd be able to endure it. Lord, you know, I follow you, but only this much. Or like, I, I have, I, you know, I have limitations in part of you, God. And how many of us, I believe all of us put limitations on God, whether it's inner vows, whether it's verbally, whether we've written it out or we said it. We have limitations on God in our lives that we say, no, this cannot happen to me. I'm a, I'm a woman of God or I'm a child of God. No, 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 Lord, you can't allow this to happen to me. No, no, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't, like, it is, why would you allow this to happen? I would not ever want something like this to happen to me. But see, when we give ourselves over to the maker, when we say, Lord, I'm yours, when we say, God, you are Lord of my life, that means he's the Lord, he's a master, that he means he's the potter, that he means he's God, and he's able to form, break, uproot, twist, bind, or wound, however he pleases in order to get the end result, which is holiness and intimacy and union with him. And many times, guys, it's a scary thing. Like I said, I found myself in this season fearing suffering. I did. You know, I think before I feared it, but this is a different level of fear that I had where I'm like, Lord, it's almost as if I was, as if I was like, Lord, I trusted you with my life and my heart. How could you have allowed the biggest fear that I had? How could you have had to happen to me? How then can I continue following you and trusting you, Lord? How could you, like, all and all these things make us went inward. I began to look at myself like, how, 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 why, why, why? And that's one thing, of course, we know not to ask. Sometimes we can't understand the Lord's hands, but we need to understand his heart. That he indeed works all things out for our good. So I found myself in that place and recognizing, Lord, I have put limitations on you. That I found myself like, Lord, if this happened, could I really indeed continue to follow the Lord in faith and hope and continue to trust him? And God has been so faithful to really heal me from that situation that happened. And I will definitely will share that with you guys at a later time, you know, as a testimony. But really heal me from those things happening. And really saying like, no, no. Follow me. Give, just ask for the grace to follow me closely because now you follow me at a distance because you fear suffering. So those who fear suffering, those who fear drinking the cup will follow Jesus at a far, a farther distance. A farther distance. And I really believe it take a longer time to get to the end result, which is holiness and an intimacy with the Lord than those who say, God, not my will, but your will be done, just as Jesus did. And I think that it's okay. Like Jesus came before God in, in the garden and said, Lord, look, if it's possible, take this cup from me. So I think it's okay to say, Lord, these, and I think he wants that too. I think he wants to hear our weaknesses. He wants to hear our deepest, darkest fears and saying, God, like, I don't know if, if you like this in my family, I could have them. Like, I don't know if you like this. I don't know if you like this. Or these are my fears that I have, but I surrender them to you. And I say, God, not my will be done, but yours. And how many times like, do we find ourselves praying that? Even when we have family members on the deathbed, it's great to have expectation, to have faith, because that's what God desires. We should always stand in that first and foremost. But I say one thing, like with my grandma, when she was passing away, we knew that she was dying. 
it was getting to a point where she was getting so near and we didn't know what to do. We were praying, we we're fasting, pressing to the Lord, and I just said, Lord, I show us your will. What is your will for your grand our grandmother? I said something to my uncle and my aunt and all the, and these uh my loved family members all died within a span of like three years, each and I think one each year. But God was so faithful and to the point where he actually would reveal he would reveal in dreams to myself or to my siblings and he let us know that my will is to take them. And I was like, Okay, Lord, not our will, but your will be done, take them. And I had such peace that each and every single one of them that passed away, I didn't cry. Because I knew they were Jesus, guys. I knew that was his will. And they were the Jesus. And that I'm going to see them soon. So I, I, God is so faithful and merciful in that because he didn't have to do that. And I don't know if a time will come in my life where I have to face that. And God is a fool when you tell me ahead of time. That definitely a test of faith to trust. To trust it's him even, having, even if, when he hasn't spoken to me. And so I even had a, um, a family member too as well who was eight months pregnant, guys. Eight months pregnant. So we, I was so excited. I was called to be the godmother of this child eight months pregnant and then they uh, the um they kept calling me and calling me saying like you know hey i think something is wrong with it, my baby i think something's wrong with pressing or pray i was getting raymuck words from the lord concerning this like the lord's like it's on 25 trust trust in the lord you know so i was just so encouraged and i came back from a retreat and i found out the baby passed away it was a stillborn and i was utterly heartbroken so i guess that was a test faith because I did ask the Lord, I was like, but Lord, you said to trust you. And I've recognized, like, when the Lord says trust, when I've come before him and certain things like that, I'm like, Lord, uh, please don't let this my fear. I'm fearing something. Please don't he give me trust. That does not necessarily mean that he's saying that these things, the thing I'm fearing or thing maybe you may be fearing is not going to happen. He's saying to trust me. Even if I allow it, will you trust me? And so I thank God that this family member of mine has so much peace. I called and they were just like so not moved, like, oh, the Lord said peace and restoration, so I'm fine. I know the baby is with him. And I'm just like, wow, God, like, what a grace you've given her to just be so unyielded and so moved and so trusting in you. And how many of us be completely unraveled, undone, losing a child like that. And so we have to, just once again, let's, let's go in scripture here concerning the Lord and what he spoke to as well, what his countenance was and his heart was to his father. In the moments of despair. I mean, he knew he had to face his biggest agony. Okay, so it's Jesus prays in Gethsemane. And just Matthew 26, 38. So then Jesus went with them to the place called Gethsemane. He said to the disciples, sit here. While I go over there and pray, and taking, him, taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on his knees and prayed, saying, my father... If it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but you will be done. And he came to the disciple and they found him sleeping. He said, you cannot watch, but one hour watch and pray that you may not enter temptation. And again, he said at the same time, he went away and prayed, said, my father, if this cannot pass, unless I drink it, your will be done. Amen, amen. So if this cup cannot pass, unless I drink it, let your will be done. And how many of us guys, uh, yeah, how many of us get to that place? And going back to it, it's interesting that he took Peter and the sons of Zebedee because this, is the, and I really believe this was foreshadowing, the Lord wanted to show them what they would have to endure because every apostle uh, besides Paul, I mean, besides uh, John was completely martyred and tortured to death. And here, this is uh, the sons of Zebedee. This is their mother coming before Jesus, asking the Lord, hey, I want my sons to actually sit before you in glory. And this is what the Lord says. So, so the mother of sons of Zebedee came up to, to her with her sons, kneeling before him, asking, what do you want? And she said to him, say these to my two sons of mine are to sit one at your right hand and one on your left in your kingdom. And Jesus answered, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I'm able to drink? This cup of bitterness, this cup of agony, this cup of passion, this cup of suffering, so great a suffering. Are you able to drink it? That's what he told the mother. Are you sure your sons are able to drink it? They said to him, we are able. That's what they said. And he said to them, you will drink my cup, but sit on my right hand and my left is not mine granted, but it is for those from whom it has been prepared by the father. So here he tells the sons of Zebedee, oh, you will drink this cup of suffering. Oh, indeed, you guys will, because he foreknew, he knew exactly what these apostles would go through. But as far as those who sit and reign with him on thrones in heaven, that's up to the Father. So I say to say right now is that every believer, when you say yes to Jesus, the Lord calls us to p deny ourselves, 
pick up our cross and follow Jesus. And guys, our crosses can be anything. Our crosses can be anything. And it has to come to a place that, what, do you have limitations? Do you have a cross in your life that you said, you know what, Lord, I can't do this cross. I'm done. I'm going back to the world or I'm done. I, I can't follow you this closely, Lord. I, I know that you're calling me to this, but I can't do this anymore. How many, there's so many who have given up on Jesus because of the crosses that he's allowed. And they don't deny themselves. They turn around rather and begin to go back to the ways of the world. Or be, unfortunately, better yet, they end up denying Jesus. Denying their faith, going back because they lose their children. And so this is a cup that chalice I have here. So I really want to ask you right now, this chalice. I really want to ask you, like, what is your limitations? What what is your cross? Do you have you come before God and said, you know what, Lord, that there's a cross in my life right now. There's a cross in my life that I know if you allowed, I just I can't do it, Lord. I can't drink this cup. Will you let this cup pass? So I want to ask you, will you let this cup pass? Will you let this cup pass? Will you let God's glory, God's goodness, would you let God's judgment, would you let it pass? Because I recognize that, yes, God is in control. He does not do everything, but he allows all things, whether it's good or bad. And he keeps reminding us that whatever he allows, that is so painful, that he's always working out for our good. So I have a different script, the different things on here. I'm going to ask you, like, will you let this pass? If the Lord offers you a cup and says, hey, I called you to a life of scorn and contempt. That is your cross. Will you let this cup pass? Or you say, not my will, Lord, but your will be done. If the Lord says, okay, you want to surrender, you want to follow me. But I've given you a cross of disability, permanent disability in your life. Will you let this cup pass? Or will you drink of this cup? And say, Lord, not my will be done, but your will be done. If Jesus says, hey, I've called you to deny yourself, pick up your cross, and your cross is the loss of a good name. You'll be scandalized. Your name will be tarnished for my name's sake. Will you let this cup pass? Or we say, not my will be done, but yours. If the Lord allows, gives you a cup of public shame. You'll be shamed in, in public for my name's sake. Will you allow this cup to pass? Or we say, not my will be done, but your will be done. If the Lord has given you then a cross of barrenness and miscarriages, as heavy and as painful and as hard as that may seem, will you let this cup pass? Or we say, Lord, not my will be done, but yours. If God has given you a cross of rejection of family members and peers, whether it's for a season or it seems for so long, they just grown up with rejected and uh, neglected by family members, those who love. And God's saying, that's a cross I've called to bear. Will you let this cup pass? Or will you say, Lord, not my will be done, but yours. If God has called you to a life of imprisonment, yes, <laughs> he himself was in prison. The apostles, many of them, Paul was in prison for years for his name's sake. If God says, I've given you a cross, you may be, you'll be in prison for my name's sake. Will you let this cup pass? Or we say, Lord, not my will be done, but your will be done. If he's given you a cross or a cup of false accusations to drink, they'd be falsely accused left and right, family members, friends, co-workers. Whatever situation may be, will you say, Lord, I've had enough. I can't continue following you. Or will you let this cup pass, this drink? And say, and will you drink the, of it and say, Lord, not my will be done, but your will be done. If the Lord has given you a cup of abuse of any form, sexual abuse, physical abuse, verbal abuse, however difficult it is, so difficult, so traumatic, so painful. But if indeed the Lord has allowed that in your life, will you drink of this cup? And we say, God, not my will be done, but your will be done. If God has given you a cup, a cross of chronic pain, it seems like nothing can alleviate it as painful and excruciating as it can be. Remember as excruciating as it was when he was flogged, when his flesh was torn to pieces for our sake, for our sins. Will you let this cup pass? Will you drink of this cup and say, Lord, not my will be done, but your will be done. 
If God has given you a cross or a cup of sickness or terminal illness, however devastating that can be, will you drink of this cup? When we say, Lord, not my will be done, but your will be done. If God has called you to betrayal, betrayal and friendships, if he's given you a cup of betrayal and friendships, if he's given you the hardest cup, which is betrayal and marriage, infidelity in your own marriage, and it's so hard right now, but God is saying, will you trust me? I can redeem it. Or if that's your biggest fear, and you're saying, Lord, all of these things that Nana mentioned, there's no way I can't, I can't do it. You, I, you can never allow this to happen in my marriage, in my life. This can be my story. Can I be letting that cup pass? Or will you lay that down, all of these things, and say, God, not my will be done, but yours? If God gives you a cross of scandalization, when your name is scandal, your life is scandalized, your family is scandalized, will you drink of the cup? Will we let it pass? If God has given one of the most difficult things, like I said, my family member went through a death of a child. Such a heavy, heavy cross to carry, but a cross the Father knew so well. Will you let this cup pass? We drink of this cup and say, Lord, not my will be done, but your will be done. If the Lord has given you a cup of delays, where everything seems delayed, whether it's delayed even with your children, delayed even with marriage, delayed even uh, with your um, progress in life. Sometimes he, he loves to allow delays and contradictions in our lives to grow us in endurance, perseverance, and impatience. So many times we're, we've been preaching that delays is of the enemy, oh, enemy of progress, but sometimes he allows us. Will you drink this cup if that is your portion, if that's your cross to bear, even in this season? Will you allow this cup to pass or say, not my will be done, but yours? So I feel that's what the Lord is having this season. All these things I mentioned, I have no idea if in my lifetime will happen. To happen to one person, all these things, it seems unbearable. But I have to think that it happened to our Lord. All of these things, guys, and even more. Is that he faced every temptation but did not sin. He was a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief, rejected, accounted as not worthy. He was absolutely nothing to look at, it says in his word was afflicted with sickness for our namesake, for our sins. He was led to the sheep. He was led to slaughter like a sheep for our sins once again. But even him, he said to the Father, Lord, if you allow this cup to pass, but if you're not, Lord, not my will be done, but yours. So it's okay to come before God and say, Lord, these are my fears. These are my things that I, I'm not sure what I can let go of my life and have you just do whatever you desire to do. Because some people read Job and it makes them so uncomfortable. Because they see God as just treating Job almost as a little pawn, however he desires. It makes people uncomfortable that God has so much providence as if, once again, we have rights. And we forget that we have no rights, guys. We don't. We have absolutely no rights. But the God that we serve is so merciful, so gracious. He's so loving kindness. That he, he, you know, says, what is man? That he's so mindful that he thinks of us. He thinks of us. He wants a relationship. And sometimes because that relationship becomes so casual with him that we feel that we have a right to instruct him as to what to do, what not to do, what to allow or not to allow in our lives. And I'm learning that with me. I can't. So I come before God. And I say, Lord, these are things that are fearful to me. But God... If they may pass, let it pass. But if not, I will not let this cup pass from me. Jesus, I can bring me to the point where I love and enjoy the crosses you allow in my life. That I count in joy in trials and in suffering. That I too will drink the bitter cup that you drank with you. That I will neglect you and leave your side. That I may be counted worthy to suffer for your name. Sharing your affliction and suffering even now that I may share in your glory. And I pray that many of us will come to that place. That if you recognize the beauty of the cross, the passion of the cross, and the cross that truly is the only way to life. 
especially in these last days and end times, the only way to God's glory, the only way to intimacy with the Lord, deep, deep intimacy with the Lord, and the way to holiness, because it kills our flesh. The, time, the moment in the garden that Jesus drank this cup, he said to the will of the Father, he died, complete himself. He died already to himself before, but he really had laid down all, because he knew that's why he was sent, the reason which he was sent. He died to himself at that moment and said, Lord, you're not my will, but yours. So every time we find ourselves faced with situations, faced with crosses, faced with things that are so painful, that are so hurtful, that are so overwhelming that we can't even imagine why the Lord allowed us to have it. It's a moment for us to have a respond, to die to ourselves. I say, Lord, if you will, then not my will be done, but yours. But make some good out of this or redeem this situation. But please, whatever it is, brothers and sisters, do not allow it. God's cup to pass from you. Because I believe a time will come where I'll stand before the Lord. And many of us will be so ashamed. Many of us will beat ourselves, will be necessary, will be weeping and gnashing of teeth because we live life so selfishly. Because every time that God came with a cup, we're like, uh uh-uh. no, no, I don't want to drink that. I want to live a comfortable life now. I'm good. No, no, I just, I just, I, I just kind of want to live right now, my best life now. That's the term that people are using now. Live the best life now. That's such a life um, from the pits of hell. Then you want to just live your best life now. So not only that, you can lose your eternal life. Or if you don't lose your eternal life, you basically live a life and come before the Lord with no reward, empty of absolutely nothing to stand before him because you live life for yourself. When God is that we live for eternity, that we live, we live according to the will of the Father now, that we live our best lives in eternity. That's what we're living for. That's what we're living for. It's not to live our best life right now. Our lives now is to yield ourselves to the potter, yield ourselves to the will of the Father, and the crushing, the pressing, and the stripping, that we may truly be vessels unto honor, filled with the Holy Spirit, to do the work and call of God, which should reconcile men unto himself. And the only way we be able to do that to the best we can do that is by walking in holiness, pursuing righteousness and godliness in all that we do. So that means our prayers won't be hindered, and on that become examples, then we truly reflect the image of the one who created us. Because he's holy. So he's calling us to holiness as well. I don't know everything that I'm saying now. I know it's the Lord. I can never teach him nothing that I don't go through myself. So I know more refining fires are coming. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. But I just want to read an insert here from this book called Imitation of Christ. I read it before. I encourage you guys, please get this book. So good. For those who are really serious about the walk of the Lord and really serious about imitating Christ, walking, pursuing, and holiness, and walking to Mr. Lord, I'm glad to give this book because it's so profound, the revelation. And so this is this insert that really got me thinking and got me just humbled and like, okay, Lord, I can run and escape from this suffering. I can run and escape from these crosses you want me to bear. I just need to learn to love them. And it says here, that, seem, that seems a hard saying to many. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. But it will be much harder to hear the last sentence. Depart from me, you, you wicked, into eternal life. Wow. For they, they who now willingly hear the word of the cross and follow it shall not then flee that hearing in eternal damnation. This is a sign of the cross shall be in heaven when the Lord comes to judgment. Then all the servants of the cross who in life have conformed themselves to the crucified shall draw nigh to Christ the judge with great boldness. Why fearest thou then to take up the cross, which leads you to the kingdom? In the cross is health, in the cross is life, in the cross is protection from enemies, in the cross is heavenly sweetness, in the cross is strength of mind, in the cross is joy of the spirit, in the cross is the height of virtue, in the cross is perfection of holiness. There is no other health of soul, no hope of eternal life, save in the cross. Take up therefore that cross, follow Jesus, thou shalt go into up eternal life. He went before thee, bearing his cross, and died for thee upon the cross that you also may bear the cross and may love to be crucified upon it. For if thou be dead with him, if we shall be dead with him, then we shall also live with him. And if thou be a partaker of his suffering, then we also be a partaker of his glory. Amen. So it's like, why then should we, why are we then scared of the cross? Why do we then uh, despise carrying this cross? Why is it that when it's life, when it's joy in the spirit? And guys, I'm saying all this because I know I'm not there at all. Like when these crosses come, I'm just like, ugh complaining what was me just down and downcast but i just want to get to a point that's my prayer guys for 2019 i was like lord grant me the grace to actually desire suffering and to 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 be be so full of joy 
carrying my crosses. That's all I desire. Not even maybe that circumstances don't change, but I just want the joy of the Lord to truly indeed be my strength. Because I really recognize that true all, all these trials, like it has brought me such a greater level of love for the passion of, of the cross. It's really given me a greater love for worship. It's really given me a greater love just for Jesus and who he is and what he's done and how he's done things, not only in my life, but in those just all around me. And seeing how he still suffers and bears those crosses, wants me, uh, desires then for me to really want to share in that sufferings with him because I see that my Jesus is still hurting. And he's looking for brides who want to lay down their lives and say, I would not let this cup pass. Lord, not my will be done, but your will be done in my life. Whatever that may be. Whatever that may be. And trusting his hand. I'm trusting his heart. We cannot see his hand at work. Amen? Because that's definitely unless he said, well, I have to trust his heart when I can't see his hand. So I pray this message has blessed you and encouraged you. I pray that you are willing to lose your life, that you may gain it in him, and come to really carry your cross and love your cross so it really doesn't become a cross at all, but it comes a way of, of just joy, enjoying our not only our salvation, but enjoying the, the perfection that God is doing us as you transform us into our image. I pray that for myself included. So I pray this truly challenge you to come before God and really just share your heart with him and really surrender all your fears to him and allow him to do whatever he desires to do in your life for his glory, for his glory. Because guys, I believe at the end, all of us who say yes to the cross, who say yes to the cup, will be so beyond worth it. He'll be on, it'll be beyond our wildest dreams once we get to heaven. And even I believe he'll really give grand graces and blessings, consolations now for those who say yes. That would, dis- that would just be like, oh, we wish he did more. I think I heard that before. A pastor went to heaven. He's like, the, five mi- the first five minutes you come to heaven, you wish you did more of your life for Jesus. And I pray that. I, I-, I always ask the Lord, Lord, I want to be able to use all my talents. I want to die before just completely empty, empty of myself and to really be able to do all. And now is the time, guys. Now is the time more than ever. Jesus is coming back. So really just um, deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow Jesus and say yes. Say yes to whatever he allows in your life. That his will is done and not ours. Amen. So, Father, I just thank you for this word. I just bless this message, Lord. I just bless the more graces upon graces upon graces. Bring understanding to those, Father God, who will be hearing of the ear. I pray they hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Father, I pray, Father God, there be many more brides who say yes to you, Lord. That we no longer allow this cup to pass, Lord. Who would say, God, not our will be done, but your will be done. Whatever it is that you may allow in our lives. Whatever crosses you allow us to bear, Lord God. Even those who carry heavy, heavy crosses. Oh, God, help us. Give us the courage to press in. Give us the courage to follow you. Give us the grace, Lord God, to follow you closely, Lord Jesus. And give us the supernatural grace to actually desire suffering. And to counter joy when we suffer for your name, Lord. That we'll be a people of complainers. Only a people who are discontent, but people who are happy, Father God, to share in your afflictions, that may share in your glory. And that's only by your grace and your mercy. So what I ask of these things, and I ask of these things for all those who are watching in the mighty name of Jesus. For those who have been wounded and hurt, Father God, because of Christ you allow, who maybe even be angry at you, Lord. Who may be hurting, who, who, don't have a, who don't have understanding. God, I pray right now that you touch their hearts just as you did mine. God, heal their wounds, Lord, because you, you wound and you bind. So God, would you bind up the wounds, Lord, draw them your courts of loving kindness. Speak your truth with any speaking lies, Lord Jesus. And have them fully surrender, knowing that, trusting that, Father God, all that you allow, you work out for our good, for your glory, because you are called according to your purpose. So Jesus, we trust you. Jesus, we trust you. Jesus, we trust you. Holy Spirit, I pray that you just continue to just do your work on these words and this message. May this word not return void in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May hearts begin to say yes. May to pursue the will of the Father and all that they do. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys.